What's up, Dart family? We are back again with another installment of the Dart Language Tour annotated documentation by yours truly. And uh, today we're on using class members. This is in the classes section. Um, it's a pretty big section and it's very important uh, in Dart. So this is what we're going to be focusing on. Okay, um, class members. What are class members? Members of a classification. Okay. So objects have members consisting of functions and data, methods and instance variables, respectively. When you call a method, you invoke it on an object. Okay, the method has access to that object's function and data. The method has access. Okay. To an instance variable or method. Okay, member. Yeah, so what I'm not sure about is in this example, we have a, um, a new point in, in, in this point class comes from the Dart math library or package. Um, and we have this variable P that, that, that represents this, this instance of a point. Now is that, is that instance, um, is, is that what we're calling the object? And it has members where it's these things? I think that's what that means. So a class can have members. Okay. Let's Google object oriented programming class members because I think this is a, um, a concept that's going to be bigger than just Dart. Um, class members and instance members. Okay. Let's check out Quora. Why not? You can load page. Anything, okay, the members, the two types of class members used in object-oriented programming languages. Uh, anything which is defined inside the class is a member of a class. Uh, the class can contain the following members. Uh, variables, method, constructors, inner classes, mainly there are two types of class members which are more frequently used and it's the variables and the methods, okay? So me as, as a programmer, like I understand that classes have uh, properties or data, you know, attributes. And they also have behavior or functions. Um, we call them methods when the functions are inside of a class. Um, collectively, those are called the members of a class. I think it's just giving a name to something that we already use. I, I rarely ever in practice actually refer to any of these things as the members of a class. It's just not something I use in everyday language. Okay, so that, that's what you need to know is that this, the, there's this whole subsection in classes and it's the first one that says using class members. Um, I guess that's a, a shorter way than saying using instance class variables um, not even, not even class variables, um, just instance variables and methods. Okay, um, there are there are other things like a um, uh, you know constructors and inner classes. And let's just take a look. Um, let's say I have class uh, dog. Okay, that extends object. I'm just being very verbose. Um, Say we have a property. Um, must be initialized. Okay, I guess they all start at zero. Um, yeah, so it has this property or what is called a um, an instance variable. Okay, uh, we can also have some.
Okay, we can have some behavior. So this is a method, this is a property, uh, or an instance variable, and uh, collectively these are our members. Um, if we wanted to have a constructor, we could do so. Uh, you get a constructor for free, as they say, which means I can I can create an instance of the dog without defining how to create an instance. Um, okay. So there's the constructors, and I guess you could do inner classes as well. Class uh, inner dog. I don't know if that's um, allowed in Dart. It says classes can't be declared inside other classes. So scratch that. Um, inner classes. Not something you can do in Dart. Now we know. Okay, so so yeah, collectively these are the members. Um, let's take the um, this first line from the example and just play with it, and we'll talk about it. Okay. No, it doesn't go there. Because here, and let's format that. All right. Uh, the first thing to note is that we don't know what point is. Okay, big red error. Not good. Um, fortunately, I happen to have run across this before. Otherwise, if you're just going through the docs, you might be a little confused when you try to play around with that. Um, we need to import a math library that we don't get out of the box or for free, as they say. Um, all right, so now point comes from this Dart math library, and uh, the documentation here for that shows that in this library there are four classes. Point is one of them. Okay, there we go. Uh, we can see it in uh, GitHub if we want to. All right, so here is the class, class point. So somebody at one time declared this thing called point. And you can see it has uh, instance variables here, x and y. It has a constructor uh, where you pass in x and y. Um, and then it has uh, the toString method here. Um, and that returns a string and it plops in x and y. Um, yeah, it's it's not a huge class, but it it does stuff. It has some other methods called like square distance, distance to, uh, magnitude. Uh, it has this. Um, now this is interesting. I've never seen this syntax before, um, and I'm not going to worry about it right now. <laughs> that looks really complicated. Okay, um, but what I want to do is show you that with this. Um, this instance of point, I can access some of those instance variables and some of the um, the methods as well. Okay, so it says get the value of y. We're going to assert that p dot y, which okay, this was x, this was y, um, so it should be two. So that should return true. Remember, asserts don't work in Dartpad, so we're going to replace that with print. So that's true. Well, watch what happens whenever I try to p dot. As soon as I use that dot, I immediately get access to um, hash code, obviously. So things like hash code, runtime type, um, no such method, and typically to string. Those four methods I get from object, which is what point uh, extends from. Um, X and Y are the um, instance variables. And so you can see it doesn't tell you what they return. There's no little arrow with the type. Um, so I can print X like that. I could print P dot Y. Okay, and I should get two for each of those. Alright, um, 
something else I can do is I can get p dot uh, do, do, do magnitude. And what that does in uh, Cartesian coordinates, if you remember those, where is the, I have a, um, a tool on here. I don't remember what it's called though. Where's my apps? Launchpad? Yeah, what is the name of that app? It's not clean shot. It is. What is it? Smart switch? No. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah. It's something where I could just draw on the screen. It used to be up here because it's not up here now. I was kind of hoping, but I'm not seeing it. Huh. Telegram smart switch. It's not that. Scre is it screen brush? Let's try it. What is screen brush? I don't remember the name. It is sweet. All I want to do is draw some Cartesian coordinates. Okay, this is our, our x axis, this is our y axis. Alright, one, two, one, two. Alright, so our dot p is right here, okay? That's that's p represented by the point. Magnitude. All right. If we go back to um, what's the shortcut? Option tab. Nice. If I go back to GitHub and look at the magnitude, this thing here. What it gets is, is it says it, it gets the straight line, the Euclidean distance between the origin and this point. Okay, um, and that's represented by this this uh, little equation here, where you take the square root of x squared plus y squared. Pretty cool, huh? <clears throat> so we're just going to get the magnitude that way. Okay, so that's the distance right here. That is a terrible line. Anyways, it's roughly 2.8 something, whatever units these are. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. All right, so I said use a dot to refer to the instance variable or method, and we saw that when we were able to type p dot, and we got the list of things to, we, those were, those were the, effectively the members. That is a list of, of members we had methods and instance variables, okay? Those were the members on the instance uh, that we were looking at. Um, yeah. So next thing we're gonna do is invoke distance two on P. Okay, so we have P dot distance two, and we pass it a point, so distance two here it looks like it takes in this thing called other, which is a point, all right? So we need to pass it a point just like we did earlier. Okay, what are they doing? Four and four. So similar to what was above, you can do something like that. Now look back at the docs. This method returns a double. That's a return type. So I'm going to say double distance equals this. Uh, and I'm just going to print the distance. What you may be surprised to see is that if we look at that point for 4, 
the distance between 2, 2, and 4, 4 should be the same distance as between 0, 0, and 2, 2. Okay. And when I run that, voila, it is the same. So that's kind of nice. Okay. Um, yeah. That is the um, first look at class members. We have one more thing I want to show you. <clears throat> so in Dart, we have this idea of null safety or not null by default, um, where we really we really don't want null things to be out there, right? We want a universe with matter um, and energy. We don't want, you know, nothing or nothingness. Okay, so this next part says use question mark dot instead of just the dot to avoid an exception when the leftmost operand is null. This is the leftmost operand, this P right here. If you look back at the, um, the documentation, let's say for uh, magnitude, actually not magnitude, distance to, please highlight when I drag, thank you. Um, it says returns the distance between this and other. This is referring to uh, the leftmost operand, this P that represents point. That is the object on which these, these members belong. Okay, so it says something like this. Let's paste that in. Format, if P is non-null, set a variable equal to its Y value. Okay, so if P exists, if it, if it is present, set it. Um, but right now, you'll notice we get these little, uh, we get an info and we get a warning. Okay, the info is pretty uh, easy to solve. It just says, hey, you're not actually using A, so why don't we print it? Um, the warning goes on to tell us that the receiver can't be null. All right, it's saying like, hey, it's definitely a point. <laughs> So why are you even using this question mark? Okay. So really it's just like that, just like we did up here on line seven, p dot y, because we've, we've guaranteed by setting it this way that p is not gonna be null. But what if somehow, um, maybe there's some other kind of logic going on, we ended up with a null p like that. Do you wanna comment all this other stuff out? Um, so yeah, we're also not using that. <laughs> it says don't explicitly initialize variables to null. Well, that's too bad. Okay, we do get this, this uncaught type error, uh, cannot read properties of null. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, um, that's unfortunate. But what if we put a question mark here? Can we fix that? Okay. So we did. Um, now we're just hard coding for demonstration purposes, but when P is null, um, you need to sort of uh, null guard against that or use this question mark thing, which is kind of like a null guard. Um, in the event that it's null, don't throw an error uh, because Y doesn't exist anymore. The the value of y was only a thing on p when you had a point like that. Okay. Okay, you're back. Okay, and now it's just like hey this question mark is redundant. Um, but as soon as something happens that like makes this variable p null um, all of a sudden you, you have to have uh, this question mark. Otherwise, like you saw, we had an error. Um, and thinking back to the exceptions and the errors um, video we did, when you have something like this in your program throws an error, um, recognize that this is not, um, whether it's caught or not, it's an error. 
and errors are meant to be fixed. Exceptions are meant to be handled. Errors are meant to be fixed. Um, okay. So that is that's that. All right. So that's using class members, uh, which you can access on an instance of a class. Also, what they're just calling here an object is the instance of a class. Um, next time we will go into constructors, which is a little lengthy. Um, yep, and that's where we're at. Thanks for your time.